You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? Get lost. You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? You're a bit slow. Spectacles are unpopular among thugs. I don't want to arouse suspicion. I'd better wear a shabby hat. Stay where you are. What are you doing here, and where is Sherlock Holmes? Calm down, Watson. Take deep breaths now. It's me. Oh, thank God, Holmes. I can't get used to your disguises. Thank you, Watson. That means I am ready to go. What's your name? My name is Nigel. I'm here to open the locks. Talented, eh? Let's see. Go inside the marquee and show yourself to Charles Foley. And I'd highly advise you not to trick him. Got that? I've got it. Charles Foley is inside the marquee. So, everything is here, just as you asked. And what about the money? Some of the barrels are wet. Transportation issues, it couldn't be helped. Whatever. We'll be here after midnight to pick up the supplies. I want to be paid first. No. You'll be paid after we make the transfer, as I said. Right. I hope that no one saw you. The police are on the lookout. Of course not. I'm a professional. Glad to hear it. Be ready for tonight, then. This wooden barrel is damaged. It is difficult to say what is inside. This wooden barrel is damaged. It is difficult to say what is inside. There is a spot on this barrel that was intentionally painted out. The crest of the Honorable Artillery Company. Could it be gunpowder? I need to be sure.
The barrels are roughly clustered. It seems as though they were brought here in a hurry. That's a picture of a contemporary gentleman wearing a Robin Hood hat. Interesting. From lambs into lions, those are words of encouragement and defiance. This poster was clearly made to fire up rebellion amongst the people. This printing press is old, but still quite capable of printing hundreds of pages per day. Hmm, there are enough posters to paste across half of London's walls. Judging by the fractions and the scent, I can confirm that it is, in fact, gunpowder. Powder kegs, a printing press, and a great many blank papers. All of this was stolen by the merry men quite recently. And these poster samples. I am quite sure it is not a coincidence. The merry men are planning some sort of sabotage. Stop right here. Who are you? Are you Charles Foley? Maybe. They say that I can open any door. Do they now? We'll see that lock near the chains on the table over there. Open that. Well, they're right. What's your name? Nigel Shirley, from York. Ah, Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? Ah, Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? It's a long story. I met your brother, Vincent the Butcher Foley, in prison. He told me all about his betrayal, and all about you. Before I was released, he told me that you might find a job for me one day, and pay me some money for me craft. 
Well, he died. Seven days ago, in prison. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. The traitor has paid the blood price for it. And you'll do the job anyway, because I need a talented lock picker. I know just where to search for his legacy. It's all about the Hellenistic treasures, isn't it? Osh, you fool. Now, listen up. You'll come with us tonight, and you better mind yourself. Us? Wait, who's coming then? Billy, Jack and me. And what will I get for that? We'll share the loot. The one you seem to know about. Right. Wait for us at the abandoned manor house on a corner of Ledbrook Grove and Kensington Park Road at midnight. Deal. Here I am at the manor. Somewhere inside it are the Hellenistic treasures. This lock is quite old. It shouldn't be much of a challenge. I need to find where the safe is hidden and lockpick it. This cupboard is an absolute mess. Several books have fallen from the shelves. It seems as though this cupboard can be moved. I'll give it a try. So, that's the lock I must open tonight. Let me see. What a surprise! Another lock! Hmm, and I won't be able to pick it. I recall that precious key around Foley's neck. It might prove a decent fit. I suppose they hired me to only open the first lock. Let us wait for the thieves, trap them, and find out. Let us check the thieves' possible escape routes in the event that they are caught off guard by the police from the front door. This door is a perfect means of escape in an emergency. This door leads to a kitchen, which holds the shortest route to the back door. This door leads to a kitchen. A solid rope. A solid rope.
This should be useful. The door is now blocked. I suppose that the thieves already tried to open the lock with this formidable hammer, but they were unsuccessful. I suppose that the thieves already tried to open the lock with this formidable hammer, but they were unsuccessful. I wonder what this old chandelier is doing on the floor. It looks as though it was poorly attached. I wonder what this old I suppose This should be useful If anyone takes the hammer, the rope will uncoil and make the chandelier fall. If he runs through the dining room and takes a sledgehammer to force open the door, the chandelier will knock him down. Although this window is high above the ground, it would be possible for one of the thieves to attempt to use it for their escape. This should be useful. One step on these beads and our thief will go flying. I should walk carefully here, else my plan will be ruined. Any thief who finds his way upstairs will roll down very quickly. The ground floor window is a perfect way to escape the police. This works very well. No one will escape through this window now. There is no ladder. If anyone falls here, he will need assistance to get out. This hatch le Thank you. 
The thieves won't attempt to escape through the front door if... This should be useful. Now, it's not an open hatch, just a nice carpet on the floor. I should walk carefully here, else my plan will be ruined. Now, if a thief runs through the kitchen, he'll pay a surprise visit to the cellar. The traps for my circus companions are all prepared. I can leave now, but I'll return later with Charles Foley and his companions. Police! Police! Stop where you are! Where are they? Trapped, Watson, with your assistance. How so? Oh, you sounded just like a real Bobby, my dear fellow. You startled them into the traps. I did? I assure you, Watson, it was quite an entertaining show. They will not escape the house now. You scum! And this is the pistol used for the murder in Half Moon Street. How do you know about that? Have you closed the case yet, Sherlock? Mycroft, what are you doing here? Did you follow me? Sherlock, it may seem that I used you, but you should be pleased to know that you have served our Queen well, in this instance. So now, let us catch the big fish. But this man is not one of the merry men. No. Then why exactly are we here, Sherlock? This gentleman, Charles Foley, has been involved in a double murder and the hunter of a set of valuable antiques, the Hellenistic treasures, which disappeared in a theft many years ago. You're no better than the coppers! Holmes, that is incredible. The Hellenistic treasures. Indeed. Nothing but trifles. Where are the merry men? I don't know why you are asking me, Mycroft. They are yours to find. I'll see you soon, dear brother. Charles Foley, you committed the crime of premeditated murder and of theft. You will be severely punished for your deeds. You are pitiful, you Scotland Yard dog. Save your words for the gallows. I am sure the journalists will love them. I shall leave now, Watson. Gentlemen, please take our friends here into custody. Where are you going? I have unfinished business. I'll see you at Baker Street. Be careful with the lamps. Don't bring them too close to the barrels. Good evening, gentlemen. Who's there? That is of no importance. What matters is who you are and the plans that you have here. <laughs> so you can stop us from carrying them out? 
Eventually, yes. Hey, careful. You'll blow us all up. I'm listening. We are a group known as the Merry Men. But I suppose you knew that already. We are the men who've already lost everything of value in their lives. We are ruined shopkeepers. We are workers who were fired from their jobs. Honest people who were robbed. We were forced out from our homes and thrown onto the street. And all of this in the name of the so-called law. The laws that were set out by our government. The laws that make the commoners only more vulnerable and the wealthy more protected. We are not only from the British Empire. Some of us are from the New Lands, America, Australia, and we are many. But men, we are still, and we are merry for that we stopped being afraid. For those powers that be had done their best to plant the fear inside our souls, and we accepted it so easily. The fear advised us to keep our heads bowed. It prevented us from fighting. Bankers and politicians, they own our lives, our work, our bread, and they push us to compete between each other just to see who may serve them better. But in the end, they are the few, so they are weak. They are nothing without their titles. We should not fear them. Our so-called masters should fear us instead. The time has come for our group to stand tall. Our great and many, merry men. We are going to blow up the London Stock Exchange. No lives shall be lost. But ownerships, debts, and property titles? They shall all be destroyed. They're only papers, after all. So many people will be freed over this night. That is a radical step to take. What result do you truly expect? Chaos. But soon people will understand that they are free, and that they don't belong to anyone. They will be able to work for themselves, together, without letting the rulers dictate what to do, and finally justice will arise. What you are intending to do is a crime. It is not justice. How do you see justice, then? Kids go to prison for a loaf of dry bread. And how many lords do you see punished for stealing from their people, sending them to their deaths in mines or overseas to fight for land? Our masters wouldn't hear us. So now it's time to sing the song of the merry men. Will you let us do our duty? When people fight the order, they are too blind to see the consequences that throw society into chaos. I shall stop your actions, but not you. Run. Now! So, you're interested in Russian literature now. Quite lately. It is an interesting book. I remember a few lines. Really? I tried reading it myself, but I had a hard time understanding it. Yes, Doctor. It's about intelligence. Sherlock, I vaguely recall one of the lines. Sometimes it takes something more than intelligence to act intelligently. Hmm. There were also a few words along the lines of pain and suffering are always inevitable for a large intelligence and a deep heart. Hmm. Tell me, Doctor, does my brother show any signs of pain or suffering? Uh, not that I know of. Because you see, Doctor, behind all of his masquerade, my brother does possess a deep heart. So deep that he does not recall where he places his love. Well, I'm sure that... Uh... His love and his duty that, in the first place, should be directed towards the Empire. For without it, we would be nothing. A country filled with uncivilized men. 
And the Empire needs order and discipline. It has no room for chaos. People who commit crimes, or at the very least intend them, deserve punishment, Sherlock. Without justice, there can be no civilization. But we serve the truth, not justice. Your truth, Doctor, that may prove immoral. Allowing people to terrorize London, destabilizing the whole Empire. Terrorize only the powers whom you serve, Mycroft. Not I, not Watson, not Mrs. Hudson, not Wiggins. Sherlock, the Merry Men are to be stopped. Not by me. You created the Merry Men. Stop them yourself. Only make sure that you don't create ten more Merry Men by arresting the one. Good night, Dr. Watson. Anything in the post, Watson? Any clients worthy of our attention? Only a second reminder from Mrs. Hudson about our new neighbour. She urges you to remove your... Oh, I don't care about that. Holmes, the lady who will be moving in shortly has requested the use of our spare room to place all of her boxes. Wait, what? A... a lady?